Hi, Joe Smiles here. So today I'm going to talk about time under tension and how it's all, all the fitness influencers at the moment are making out like it's the most important thing when it's simply not the case. Um, they would have you believe that, but it's I'll talk about the more important and nuanced things that are will drive your training and progress forward as opposed to just focusing on time under tension. So time under tension refers to the amount of time a muscle is taking as it's going through each individual rep and each individual set. So the idea is that time under tension, so for example, the eccentric phase of a side lateral raise when I'm going down for six to 10 seconds of a long time under tension, then holding it at the bottom under resistance for five to 10 seconds, then the concentric phase of going up for another six to 10 seconds on the concentric, and then fourth phase would be holding it at the top um, in this contracted position. They're saying that it's better when for you for maximizing strength and hypertrophy. Okay, let's look at study one, 2021, entitled the, the Influence of Movement Tempo During Resistance Training on Muscular Strength and Hypertrophy Responses, a review. It explains that the increasing the time under tension can reduce not only the number of reps, but also the dynamic inertia of your lifts. So this goes against the how we build strength and hypertrophy um, because strength and hypertrophy are dependent on metabolic stress, so the amount of volume that you do per number of sets and also mechanical tension. So through in the intensity um, to drive adaptation to your musculature. Uh, thereby, this study says performing less reps due to using less force because of too much uh, to, or too long time under tension, in increasing the rep time diminishes any advantages that time under tension may provide. So it almost backfires on itself when you try and put too much time under tension for each rep and each set. Um, you then diminish the mechanical tension and metabolic stress and also progressive overload of the musculature. Okay, let's look at study number two, 2021, entitled Loading Recommendations for Muscle Strength, Hypertrophy and Local Endurance, a re-examine of the repetition continuum. So this basically explains that different loads will change the time under tension. So when you've got different loads and you're prioritizing maximizing strength and hypertrophy, um, the time, at, time under tension goes out the window because basically there's no possible way of extending time under tension for all different loading systems. Um, remember that you wanna build metabolic stress and mechanical tension using the principles of progressive overload. So if you're training with 70 to 85% of your one rep max, um, the number of, you have three options on increasing your or metabolic stress, um, time under tension and progressive overload. One is to increase the number of reps that you do. One is to, second is to increase the number of sets you do at the same number of reps you do. And the third one is to increase the number of reps and also the number of sets. So that is why time under tension goes out of the window because you're trying to focus on more important things, training within a certain intensity level and also a certain amount of volume, but it doesn't matter how fast or how slow you do the reps, you get the appropriate weight and you use the appropriate force that your body can do to move that weight, the appropriate intensity level to drive the adaptation in your musculature. So when you focus only on time under tension, you reduce the number of reps you can do for the percentage of your one rep max that you're focusing on. So it goes against the principles of progressive overload, mechanical tension and, and uh, uh, metabolic stress. So what happens is you end up doing less reps and therefore less weight at the percentage of your one rep max. And research clearly shows that you need to lift between 70 to 85% of your one rep max to drive the adaptation of strength and hypertrophy. Now you can build similar hypertrophy using 30 reps to five reps. However, the research shows that you'll build twice as much hypertrophy and bigger muscles and muscles with more contractile units and motor units and they produce more force using lower reps and higher weight, higher load than lower load and higher reps. So it's also been found that when you're training with higher load, you're training with lower volume than you are the other way around with lower load and higher volume. But there's significantly twice as much cross-sectional uh, area developed of the, of the muscle when you're lifting higher load and lower um, volume. 
The other thing to realize is that you must move to develop maximal strength and hypertrophy. You must move the weight as fast as you can. So when you use heavy weight, you'll be moving the weight slower because the force against your pushing will be slower, but you're pushing as fast as you can. And then when you're moving lighter weight, you can move the weight faster because you're able to work further away from your percentage of your one rep max. That allows you to lift the weight faster. So by doing so, this puts, um, again, time under tension out of the picture because it's all against load and volume and percentage of your one rep max. You can't move a weight fast if the weight is heavy and you can move a weight faster if the weight is lighter. We can see this from the study three, 2019, entitled Maximizing Strength Muscle Hypertrophy, a systematic review of advanced resistance training techniques and methods. And that employing a fast and controlled eccentric of around two seconds, which is the kind of the Goldilocks zone of an eccentric and a concentric, although heavier weights, the concentric might be slower uh, to like four seconds, but you're trying to go as fast as possible, uh, provides the best way of increasing cross-sectional area and additional stimulus of the muscle. So firstly, the weight should be heavy enough so that you, can, you can't go faster because the weight's heavy. And secondly, uh, the longer time under tension blunts the ability to do more reps and to do more weight. So more volume to drive mechanical tension and metabolic stress um, will drive strength and hypertrophy and it will blunt your time under tension because when you go heavier, you naturally go slower, although you're putting as much speed into the bar as you possibly can, or the dumbbells. Also study 2019, study four, uh, entitled Training for Strength and Hypertrophy, an evidence-based approach explains that the higher reps around 30 reps with high load will result in less hypertrophy than higher load. So lower, less hypertrophy than higher load. So faster resistance training and higher loads provide a better stimulus for neural adaptations and muscle cross-sectional area, which leads to greater strength and therefore transfers into great, greater hypertrophy because hypertrophy is a derivative of strength. So to summarize, reps must be done in a controlled manner and to avoid injury. So juice monkeys, I recommend going slower with your concentric and eccentric because your muscles develop a lot faster. Uh, then your tendons, your tiny tendons will uh, likely increase the chance of them snapping because they have less blood flow. Um, natural trainees like me, we can go faster on the concentric and eccentric providing it's controlled. And um, I recommend between one and three seconds on the eccentric and as fast as you can on the concentric and you just if you do any slower than that you just won't be able to progress with your weights your reps or your sets because you'll be training at less adequate levels of intensity and volume and then hence you won't be able to increase your metabolic stress and your and your mechanical tension also it's important to realize that hypertrophy is mediated by in the intensity of your effort. So hope that clears up a few things. Like and subscribe to my channel, make some comments and ask me questions if you've got any questions and I'll see you in the next video and have a great day.